Hello, I like your new outfit. I was beginning to think that you only had one dress. You should talk Mr. GQ, I had only seen you in that one suit. You've got me on that one, my suits were all in the cleaners. But let's pick up from where we left off the last time. Right. You were going to talk about how linking turns money-weighted returns into time waiting. Right. Perhaps it's better to start with what money waiting is, and then move into time waiting. With money waiting, we capture the market values at the start and end of the period under consideration. We then weight the flows that occur within the period. Thus, we see how cash flows clearly impact our return. There are two ways to accomplish this. The most accurate formula is the I, R, R, or internal rate of return. The second is the modified Dietz method. Hold on a minute, please. I thought modified Dietz was a time waiting formula. Are you trying to confuse me again? I have no interest to confuse you, but the topic itself is admittedly confusing. Yes, modified Dietz is a time weighted method, or more correctly, it's an approximation to the true, exact, time weighted return. But we'll get to this shortly. It is also a money weighted return. Though more precisely it's an approximation to what might be called the exact or true money weighted return, which is the IRR. There are times when this method fails miserably, just as it can when it attempts to approximate the exact time weighted method. So some cautions should be used when employing it. Ideally you would want to use the IRR for money weighting, though the modified DEETS is used as the first approximation for the IRR. As to how these methods can become time waiting, consider briefly the Bank Administration Institute's initiative in 1968. When they developed the first standard on performance measurement, they derived three methods to calculate a time weighted return. The first was the exact method. The problem with this method is that it requires you to revalue the portfolio whenever a cash flow occurs. While it is generally not difficult to do this today, Back in 1968 this would have been quite a challenge. The second was the linked IRR. They found that by breaking the period into sub-periods, such as quarters or years, and calculating IRRs for the sub-period, by linking these sub-period returns we could derive an approximation to the overall period's time-weighted return. The shorter the sub-period, the more accurate the result. Thus, when we reduce the sub-periods to days, we arrive at an exact time weighted return. The geometric linking that we employ compounds the returns, which is what we would expect with time weighting. I credit my friend and colleague Garl Bacon for convincing me that the modified DEETS behaves the exact same way as the linked IIR. Can you tell me what the modified BAI method is? That's just another name for the linked IRR. Oh, okay, I get it. The BAI stands for the Bank Administration Institute, right? Correct. You said there were three methods to calculate returns that came from the BAI, what is the third? The third replaces the way we link sub-period returns over time, where the sub-periods are weighted by the respective length of time. This method is not used because it isn't a good substitute. However, it is arguably where we get the term time waiting. You can hopefully recognize that we don't weigh time in either the exact or length methods, but the term has stuck. Thanks. This has been interesting. Do we have anything else to discuss? I'm sure we'll think of something. And I'll try to wear a different suit the next time we meet. Good idea. Thanks.